now. Fantastic. So welcome to the Accelerate Decentralized ID breakout room. So the reason we put this room together and asked for a session after town hall is because we have a Accelerate Decentralized Identity Challenge, which is in Fund 8. Um, and we will continue these challenges as the funds roll on um, because we are members of the Tala Prism team and we want to make sure that decentralized identity uh, infrastructure is actually used and people can actually build on top of Cardano using a Tala Prism. Um, so it'll be really nice to hear who's in the room. But before I hand over to the rest of you, there's a couple things I wanted to share. So firstly, as you know, Project Catalyst uh, Fund 8 is on the go. And our team has decided that we will host after town hall sessions so that you have a place to come to if you have any questions, if you're busy with a proposal, or if you need any kind of guidance. Our team has also opened up uh, office hours. So you're welcome to book like a 25 minute to 30 minute slot with a team member of ours. And that's if you have any questions, if you want to refine your proposals and so on and so forth. And there's Pete, Pete is my colleague and Pete will help assist you with some writing if you need help writing your proposals because he's our technical writer and he's really good with language. So um, that's Pete. And what I'm going to do now is quickly copy all of these office hours to the chat so that you can book um, sessions if you need to with any of our team members. Pete, would you like to say more about... Where's Pete? Oh, there's Pete. Would you like to say more about the writing assistance that you will provide? Yeah. Um, so basically what I'll do... Um, with you is I'll look at what you have on your page and I'll just kind of, I'll be able to give you feedback um, as to what, how it should be organized. Um, I think I can't recall who <laughs> was talking in the last meeting about kind of like maybe going for smaller increments, amount of money and kind of breaking your project maybe down into smaller sections um, over the course of a year, instead of asking for a hundred grand up front for like, you know, two months of work or something. Um, but one of the things that I like to tell people is like your opening paragraph, for example, your opening statement, that is your uh, elevator pitch. That is your 60 seconds on that show that I can't remember the name of right now, Shark Tank. <laughs> that, is your, that is your Shark Tank moment. You need to grab somebody's attention because you are the guy who is pitching something to people that want to give you money. And you need to grab their attention because if you don't grab their attention, they will not give you money. <laughs> that is how that works. So you want to you want to make sure that you grab people's attention because if you don't, they're not going to continue to read down through the rest of your proposal. You need to make sure you grab their attention. Um, from there, it depends on what your proposal is. <laughs> I mean, it could be anything from you know if you're doing something that's research based. Um, that could probably be a little bit more simple if you were doing something that's super technical, like building something with a tie-in with AI or something like that. That may be a little bit more technical as how you would explain something like that. It's just gonna depend on what it is. But the most important thing I think is that first paragraph where you're grabbing someone's attention. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Any initial questions, I guess? Thanks, Pete, for that. So Pete's uh, office hours is in the chat. You're welcome to book time with him. If his calendar is really busy, you're welcome to book time with any of the other uh, team members if you want to discuss your proposal and improving um, that proposal of yours. I see that I have a message on my screen saying all breakout rooms will close in 26 seconds. So I do apologize if we go somewhere from here. I don't know who did what. It wasn't me. <laughs> Rob, there is a general announcement by uh, Danny. Let's see in 10 seconds. Oh, okay. If it'll actually close. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. people just hit the red button, which closes everything. 
fuck out too much. Right. Who messed up? You just me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. Okay. That's just a good shot. Let's uh, like go. Let the Navy cut. Shut your pot. All right. I like Are you have the quorum or what? Okay. Yeah, let, let, let's reopen them, but I think it's it's quite yeah, uh, grand back, yeah. yeah. Just just a quick uh quick shout out. Anyone who's interested in the great migration uh challenge category, um jump into the open room, please and thank you. Always okay, that's what makes so... it so fun. Absolutely. Okay, look, we're back. <laughs> okay, it seems like recording is in progress, so we'll just continue. Um, so today we wanted to do some speed dating, but we thought, well, there aren't too many of us on the line, so we will quickly go through everyone um, who has something to say, and then we'll go through the rest. So if anybody has any questions, um, that's really burning questions that you have to ask Pete and myself, please go ahead um, and speak up. Hi, this is Sean Kelly from... Boise. Yes, um, just a quick, just clarification. So the timeline that would have been drafts due tomorrow is now pushed all the way to the 17th. Is that correct? My understanding of from the main session. That's correct. So what would usually happen is the submit proposal stage would be one week and tomorrow would be the deadline for it. And then no new ideas are allowed, but they are, they will be allowing new ideas until the 17th. However, my advice would be don't wait until then to think about submitting an idea. Start working on it now already. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome, Sean. Yes, Frederick. And, and just one thing to add there. Um, I think um, it's good not to wait because otherwise you, um, um, you miss the refinement stage or that people give you feedback. So just to iterate on that. Cheers. Thanks, Mike. Yes. Yes, my question is about uh, implementing the Datala Prism itself. Uh, I attended the, the, the Prism Pioneer program. So basically the HDK, the DAE on the, on the, on the test net. However, I'm still not able to implement it on the, I can implement it on the test net, but it's still not in a wallet of somebody. So the, up to the stage, I will ask like, uh, um, can we get more like uh, support for people who are actually doing uh, the implementation? Uh, I know that this is a proposal for people who like to try it, but we have already been funded to try and do it. And currently, unlike other dApps, this one is possibly the most challenging because frankly speaking, I cannot even confirm that it's live. Uh, maybe I missed something, I was too busy, uh, but I'm still uh, going through the whole uh, the videos are available, so I can repeat everything again. I can create my deeds, all the JSON files, but now I don't even know where to send them. Like, I see them, yep. but how do I get the students to actually hold them? Yes, mm -hmm. that's my question. Yep, so uh, you said you did go through the Pioneer program already? Okay, are you in the Discord for Atala Prism Pioneers? Yes. Um, shoot me a message. Uh, my name is Pete on there, Pete V. I think shoot me a message on Discord. Um, there is a group of guys who were funded in Fund Seven who are making a wallet, and they are collaborating with um, everybody. Who? Oh yeah, there you go, Lance. Yeah, that's one of the guys on the team. Yes, <laughs> so, yeah, I think I got. Uh, yes, I think yeah. I got one mic. I had put it into my my notebook to contact them. Uh, because he said he was working on the SDK integration with websites. So our school website would benefit from such support, but I'll contact you as well. And if there's yeah. anybody who can comment on it, welcome again. Yeah, because I think uh, Lance, you guys have a, a whole separate Discord set up um, for the Roots wallet. Um, and you guys, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you guys are kind of bringing everybody else in who has an idea to kind of partner kind of with everybody to help get that wallet made. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know what that was. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Pete. Hi, hi, Anushka. Hello, everybody. Hi, Frederick. Um, so, yes, I was in the cohort one of uh, the Italo Prison Pioneers, uh, and we uh, were generating proposals for Italo Prism 
you know, projects. And then we realized, oh my gosh, there is no wallet uh, available for all of these proposals. So um, four of us uh, combined together to uh, produce a proposal in Fund 7 to build an open source uh, wallet, identity wallet uh, to hold credentials. Uh, and so that was funded. Uh, we're working that actively now. Uh, I put in the chat here um, our, our oh, it, uh, <laughs> a spell check uh, changed it. It should be, yeah, there you go. Roots ID is the development group. Uh, there's several of us um, in there, uh, and there are even some separate channels depending on what people are interested in. If they're interested in uh, the credentials portion or the keys portion or the UI, UX portion, um, we can get you into the right um, Discord channel for that. But uh, the general channel, we're happy to have you in there. Uh, yeah, I see a bunch of people jumping in, that's awesome. Uh, we're happy to have you in the general channel and uh, find a place for you within that ecosystem. We wanna hear from anybody who wants to use uh, an Italoprism wallet. Um, we wanna hear your requirements. Uh, we wanna hear your use cases. We wanna know about the credentials that you plan to uh, present to your customers. Um, because once we have uh, something that you can, you know, like a prototype that you can uh, look at, we want your, um, your hardcore feedback, right? We don't want you to be nice uh, to us. Uh, it, you know, well, well, it's always good to be nice, but, um, you know, give us very straightforward feedback because uh, we are essentially building this for you. The reason that we call the, uh, the wallet, we call it the Roots Wallet, uh, and we call it the group Roots ID, is because uh, these are grassroots efforts that are growing up out of uh, uh, the Italoprism pioneers and just the Italoprism community in general. And so we wanna make sure there's a lot of overlap between the needs for those grassroots efforts. We wanna make sure we are capturing the very most important uh, efforts uh, first, the very most important requirements first, uh, implementing those things and then getting feedback from you and continuing the cycle over and over again. Uh, so we did submit one proposal in Fund 7 that was funded. It was a smaller proposal. We didn't realize how just amazing uh, and important this effort was. Uh, we kind of knew, but you know, uh, we were just getting started. We have, uh, I think, six proposals in for Fund uh, 8 where we break down the different parts uh, of the wallet, uh, for instance, the UI UX, the uh, storage mechanisms for your keys, your credentials, um, uh, the communication between wallets. Uh, there's a spec called Didcom for that. Uh, and so, yeah, we, uh, we're we also looking for help. Uh, if people are, are developers, um, it, we would love your help. And then obviously we call um, the grassroots use cases, we call them our partners. Uh, and so we'd love to get you on our partner list. We actually have a proposal for credentials in Fund 8 um, for our partners to be the kind of uh, leads on that proposal where they talk about the different credentials that they want to produce. So um, hopefully I didn't take up too much time, but uh, uh, yeah, it's awesome to see so many people jumping into the Discord and we'd love to have you. And I want to, I do want to add something to, to that too. One of the other things that is actually really, really important to what they're doing is it's going to be interoperable with other credentials from other platforms as well. And that is going to be one of the most key things to having SSI as a whole be adopted widespread is if you can have a wallet that holds Prism um, credentials, sovereign credentials, any other platform, that is going to be key. And as far as I know you guys may be the first ones, <laughs> the first ones out there. <laughs> yep, that's right, Pete. I really, I'm actually really glad you mentioned that because uh, that is such a huge part of uh, the SSI community. We are members of the Trust Over IP um, uh, Foundation. We're members of the Div Foundation, uh, and we're engaging with the Hyperledger Foundation. So if you're looking for um, uh, groups that talk about that stuff, interoperability and the specs that are necessary for these different wallets to speak uh, to each other. We're essentially building the identity internet, right? And so just like HTTP and TLS and all those things uh, were generated, now we're uh, generating these specs for being able to communicate um, credentials to each other uh, and to, to uh, have secure channels of of uh, open between each other. Um, identity platforms are really relationship platforms. Uh, and, and then being able to uh, produce your identity is uh, 
I don't want to call it secondary, but that that's the two parts. It's relationship and identity. So um, yeah, we, 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 one of our proposals is actually focused more on engaging in the interoperability with those communities. Uh, and so that's one of the six. I think it's, uh, it's in the SSI challenge uh, and it's called um, Roots Wallet, uh, SSI, T-O-I-P, which is Trust Over IP, uh, Interop. And so that was the point of, of that one. So yeah, thank you all. Thanks, Lance. Lance, I feel so proud to be in the same breakout room with you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I, it was awesome to see you jump into the Discord uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we, we, it was really great to see you in there, and I'm glad that we're continuing to, to connect. Yes, that's fantastic. So, Lance, can you give us an idea as to when we can expect this wallet to play with? Because that's something I just can't wait. Like, I just love playing with wallets. Yeah, absolutely. The sooner the better. Uh, and uh, Fun7, we should have, uh, by the end of Fun7, we should have a functioning Android uh, version of the wallet. Uh, we chose Android because um, the SDK that, that Prism has provided us is a Kotlin SDK. And so naturally, the easiest platform for us to support uh, would be Android. Not to mention Android has a lot of reach into a lot of the grassroots um, use cases. Um, in Latin America, in uh, Zambia, in Indonesia. Uh, and so then we have further plans for uh, iOS and web uh, support as well. Um, but yes, by the end of Fund 7, you will have a rough wallet uh, that will, uh, will help you to understand the, the direction that we're going uh, and will allow you to give us a lot of feedback to con continue to shape it. Um, I'm just looking at the schedule now. It, in Fund 8, we will be much more refined. So uh, again, one of our proposals is to enhance the UX. Uh, and so that's to make it um, something that's like super slick for people uh, to use. Uh, and then we, our first, we consider Fund 7 to be alpha, Fund 8 to be beta, and then we consider a, a V1 to be a Catalyst Fund 9. And you'll see those timelines. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna post that, the timelines with the different features. Um, broken out uh, onto our proposals. So you'll be able to see kind of the timeline for each each feature. Uh, and then in, in Fund 10, um, we consider that V2 and we're hoping that that's where the wallet can actually get accredited um, because there is actually a whole community of specs that um, if you implement them correctly, uh, then you can get accredited as being um, a fully functioning, fully secure uh, identity wallet that uh, other wallets will trust to to uh inter interoperate with so yeah we're very excited uh and yeah like i said the feedback will be so great it will be a little bit quiet with you guys probably the first two months here as we're like ramping the the development super hard but uh in that third month of fun seven that's when you should start seeing some kind of prototype that you can actually hold and touch and give us feedback on and we'll just keep iterating from there Fantastic. Thanks, Lance. And that, <clears throat> I think that's a good point too. Um, I, I don't remember who it was. I don't see your face here, but your, your name might be here <laughs> um, as to who asked the question about the wallet. Um, well, Friedrich. So one of, okay, Friedrich. So yeah, so one of the, one of the things to remember right now is, is that what, you, what we can do with PRISM right now is we can build prototypes Basically, there's no wallet for anything to go in yet, but you can build the prototype for what you're doing. And then we can start to iterate from there as to everything that's going to happen and what you can do and start moving things and playing from wallet to wallet and all that stuff. But you you are able to prototype something now. So. Yeah, uh, the, the prototype basically is for, for graduate students who obtained their uh, they, they are diplomas already. So I have this list of Excel files which can be destroyed anytime. So I wanted to yeah. kind of save them and and then distribute them. So the names, they used. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we have. And the implementation after we have those lists, then a wallet yeah. makes sense. Like we'll ask all yeah. the students to use the wallet and then I assume we'll be transferring them. It could be costly though, because it's, mm -hmm. uh, I'll see how it appears. We, I'll see yeah. how the DB is held. Yeah, and what is your what was your project again? Uh, it's a I manage a, a university in DRC in Eastern Congo. It's a deed for Congo universities. 
So we are two joint universities in two provinces that, that join together. We want to basically, uh, the idea is that we receive requests from our students going like in Europe, uh, and then the university in Europe will send us emails to confirm that the student is our student. So they did, does make sense that the student could cool. confirm that he's actually a student. Yeah. Cool, cool. And also to avoid fraud, even though we're yeah. private institutions, we want to make sure that our students have some kind of trustability. Cool. Sean's doing stuff with education too. I'm gonna throw him under the bus. <laughs> Yeah, um, super excited to to hear what Lance was saying about the wallet. Um, gets me super excited. I'd love to collaborate with you guys, Lance. Um, we're focusing on work-based learning credentials, apprenticeships, internships, different certifications and things like that, helping school districts and um, departments of education, potentially, you know, that would be the grand um, goal to um, onboard credentials related to work-based learning and, and different certifications at high school and college students and eventually help employers as well. So I'd love to learn more from you guys. I'm This is my first catalyst just jumping in and <laughs> trying to drink it from a fire hose. <clears throat> yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we have Vinay's hand up, Vinay. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Okay. Yes, we can. Luckily, I, I'm traveling, so if, if the signal drops, please. So uh, we got funded in uh, F, uh, Fund 7 for Conma Labs. So we are an ecosystem. Uh, so we have expertise in 15 different uh, sectors where uh, our, our architecture is done for uh, the blockchain functionality. Uh, now for the lab where we have technical expertise as well, and we are building our community. So we want to know how we can leverage uh, Atala Prism for people who are being part of uh, Konma, our community where uh, now Atala Prism, what I heard is uh, a decentralized identity. So how do we leverage this to get our, uh, uh, as in the, the ecosystem is like massive. Uh, we wanna know more about how we can uh, collaborate with Atala Prism to get our uh, solutions or get our uh, community the best of, as, as in like the decentralized uh, yep. hello? <clears throat> So have you, have you gone through the pioneer program yet? No, not yet. Not yet, okay. Um, I assume that you're they're probably going to be on the list to be invited to, <laughs> to join that. Um, yeah. So I didn't quite catch what, what, what is your project? So Conma is a, a, a decentralized community based on blockchain technology. Uh -huh. So we were uh, about to build on uh, Ethereum and uh, Polygon being from India. But then uh -huh. uh, I went to Emergo India for my education and I got to know about uh, Cardano. Mm -hmm. So fun seven is when, uh, as in we, we, we got to know about uh, Project Catalyst and uh -huh. we just uh, like simultaneously like took part in it and uh, got our uh, funding. And now uh, we have like the community that's like growing, but then mm -hmm. uh, it, it's still on a web two. So we want to transition it to web three. Now the entire uh, functionality needs to be on a blockchain. Now we need to leverage. Uh, so I heard about uh, Atala Prism, but haven't gone deep into how, how it works. 
Yep. So yeah. how, how do we like collaborate and get our entire uh, web two to web three transition yep. done? When so so idea. yeah, yeah. So I think the I think the first. So how step do we involve is is my. Hi, Vinay. Vinay, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what's going to happen is tomorrow we have a kickoff session scheduled okay. for Fund 6 and 7 SSI challenges. So was your, okay. was your proposal in an SSI-related challenge or a different challenge? SSI meaning? A self-sovereign identity. What challenge did you submit yes. your idea into? So we have one in national uh, uh, development DAP and okay. one in sovereign. So it, it's basically about uh, national IDs, national identity cards uh, uh, in uh, Sri Lanka. Okay. So Vinay, so what will also really happen... Really, yeah. Yeah, so we will be sending emails out. So if any of you have been proposers in any Catalyst fund from one to eight, uh, we yeah. will be sending out emails this week to invite you to the Tala Prism Pioneer Program. And this is so that you can get your SSI knowledge up to par with the latest and greatest information out there. And then we can, you know, discuss your idea further and see how else we can support you. However, if you feel like you need to speak to someone so that your proposal is not stuck, you're welcome to book uh, open office hours with one of our team members. Um, yeah. And I will just paste the open office hours, uh, our links here for you again. Um, yeah, so just book 30 minutes with one of our team members and then we'll help just we'll see where we can help you. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Do you want to add anything to that? No, I, I just wanted to know how we can use or how how we can leverage Atala Prism to get our community back. Yep. Also, and you're not you're... understanding Vinay is your full idea, right? And so we need to have a little conversation to understand what you're trying to do. Exactly. So, so, it's a, so I'm talking about an ecosystem. So we were supposed to do a DCF. Uh, so DCF is again a decentralized consortium fund. It's a, uh, we have an integrated solution. So in fund seven, we got funded for uh, Panma Labs where we are developing our uh, uh, developer, developer cohort. When it comes to the web three space. So I think it's better. Uh, uh, I, I just book a session where I get to know Atala Prism better and see how we can collaborate. Yes. Yes, yep. I think that will be best. You, Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who do we have next? No more questions. I can pick on people if nobody wants to go. I should say we, we can pick on people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go with the Peter since your camera's on. Um, hello. I'm um, sorry. I just got it, came in here to the room. I'm not even, oh. I'll need a, rundown on what oh. we're talking about yeah okay that's okay so yeah go Pete. so we're yeah, yeah so we're talking uh, about decentralized identity and uh what we can do with it and how we're helping people from like the fund six and fund seven to kind of get their stuff going and then people for fund eight helping them getting their proposals ready and kind of polished uh, to get those submitted. And what we can do with um, the Pioneer program, getting people involved in that, um, and just going around the room and kind of seeing what questions anybody has or if they have questions about a proposal they've submitted or like how Atala applies to them um, with their project and stuff. 
And so that's kind of what we're doing. Okay. Sounds cool. I'm not super technical with dids or anything. I would love to continue listening. Nadim, you have oh. your hand up. You're ready. I'll pass yeah. it off to you. Thank you, my I, friend. I got you, bro. I got you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Anushka, thank you for sharing all these links. They're very interesting. I have a question regarding the preferred services group. I just like to understand what that is, uh, because I do have a project that I'm currently involved in. And I'd like to see if this is basically your consulting arm, IOHK's consulting arm. Is that it? Yeah. OK, perfect. So I'll reach out to them. Thank you for the link. You're welcome. Is your idea also on decentralized identity, Nadim? Yes, so I've, I'm recently working with uh, a holding company where they have invested in a group of uh, technology companies, uh, around, around 15 different companies, and they all lend themselves towards the Web3 space. And at the heart of it is a decentralized identity. And uh, I actually just started getting involved and they all come from the Web2 traditional thinking. Uh, each one is great in their own service that they provide, and they've built some great you know, tech startups and you know, they're gaining traction, but everyone's coming at it from a very traditional Web2 thinking. And I joined uh, you know, and, and became involved and I'm seeing a clear synergy because you know, the, the mission and the vision of what they have is very similar to uh, Cardano specifically in terms of providing an economic identity to those who don't have one and improving the systems of the world for everyone everywhere. So I actually wanted to reach out to see uh, how maybe you know we, I can connect both parties and then take it from there. And you just sent that link. I just wanted to confirm. So thank you. Perfect timing. I'll reach out. Uh, you're welcome. Sounds great. Well, good luck. Thank you. I'm Firstly, good it. luck on changing the mindsets from Web2 to Web3 because it's it's quite a big mindset change, but once you see what Web3 can offer, it's almost like, like why can't other people see it? Like, it's so amazing. <laughs> exactly, so, so they wanted to launch so quickly, they don't understand how, what they're gonna launch, they don't understand blockchain. So what I've done is ask them for three months to come up with an integrated blockchain strategy for their entire consortium. And I'm looking for a consulting firm. And I think, I mean, IOHK would be a perfect fit. So thanks for that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. It's something crazy to think about before we get to the question. Um, so I'm actually working on a series of blogs around Web3 <laughs> and some of it's digging into the history. Do you realize that Web2 came out in 2005, two years before the iPhone came out? That's insane <laughs> how long ago that was. <laughs> So Brock, do you have your hand up? Yeah, thanks. I was just uh, very excited about the, the Lance's presentation there because as far as I'm concerned, I think that the identity and accelerating identity is key and it's integral to the entire ability for us to look at Web3 uh, at its finest. And, and, and actually achieve great things. So I am working with a team right now. I'm, I'm not a developer myself, um, but I am a Cardano believer, <laughs> I'm a believer in the blockchain space as a whole, whether it's Cardano that brings about the solutions or not, it, it's not absolutely essential, but, um, and in, in for my application, what I'm looking for is to be able to just have the ability for individuals to build their identity based on transactions. And for me, I'm looking at it from an actual business perspective where I want to transact with individuals like yourselves that I've never met before. And if I'm able to verify that you're representing yourself accurately in relation to how others would see how you're representing yourselves, then I would love to transact with individuals no matter where I am in the world. That's essentially how I view everything is we're building 
a global infrastructure so that we can have the freedom to travel anywhere and interact anywhere with, you know, whatever means of settlement we agree upon. So early on, I reached out to get a developer to start working on building a, well, a marketplace essentially. Um, but NFTs, I don't view them as specifically just art. I view them as a digital receipt, if you will, of physical items and services that people can offer. Um, and really what's holding back the developer that I have working on this is the fact that uh, running a full node as per my requirements, <laughs> uh, running a Daedalus, everything on a Daedalus wallet is, is giving him some difficulties because he's he's not Plutus or Haskell. Sorry. Um, but he is working on solutions for uh, being blockchain agnostic. So I'm, I don't understand fully how he's accomplishing it. Uh, basically, he's encrypting private keys with proofs and validations baked into the decryption function and essentially creating signed transactions through network secret computations on his side chain so that we can achieve blockchain agnot being agnostic and still be able to use our Daedalus wallets to transact peer to peer without intermediary, which mm -hmm. I think is a, a good starting point. But I was really interested in being able to start building a digital identity, even if it's on the most basic front. So yeah. if I say that I am offering, even if it's a used item, and I say that, you know, I'll, I'll sell this item and accept X amount of crypto in exchange. And I feel that it's a rated a five out of 10 and the customer purchases it knowing it, that's its rating. And the customer says, oh yes, it is a five out of 10 or actually I think it's a seven out of 10. You're undervaluing what you're offering or overvaluing. That would be just the basics of being able to transact with individuals, in my opinion, on a global scale, because yeah. my end goal is to run a shipping company. I don't want to spend the rest of my life working at my traditional job. I want to move on and have made steps to do so and want to travel the world and be useful while doing it. So yeah. my intentions are sailing around the world and transporting goods and service and services in an environmentally friendly way and helping a sailing community to develop that. So we, as a team, uh, are going to go ahead with a catalyst type proposal. However, our objective is not necessarily the financial support, it's more the technical support of what we need to get done because we've already gone through the financial aspect of it, of getting yeah. the marketplace being built. So how would a person go about with those types of proposals? Like I know yeah. there's lots of information that's like open source wallets, like that's exactly what we want. Yeah. When we're building out the marketplace, I want so it to be an example of the best of web three yeah. so so for something like that since since you have part of it done already right um what your what these proposals are basically what these are it's kind of like a business proposal right like you're basically asking to have people fund what your business is um i don't know if you were here at the beginning but it's like that whole shark tank thing right mm -hmm. like you're you you are making a pitch to them as to what here's what my business is here's what the plan is here's what we've done so far here's what we're planning to do in the next x amount of time frame you know and this is how much we need but this is what we're going to actually be able to deliver on to prove you know 
to show like we're actually doing something, you would want to start planning that out as to what does that look like and start writing that out. That's how you would actually do something with kind of what you're doing. I think, cause it sounds like I, I know what you're talking about, but to kind of like simplify it, you're basically looking at like the web three version of Yelp or Amazon reviews or something like that, right? You're basically building up a reputation system, right? Cause you want to, uh, from what we talked about, I think it was last week, uh, that was kind of what you were looking at is like the a reputation system is like, if I'm a guy who makes, I think the example with knives, um, mm. what's the standard is where I live may be different in South Africa where Anushka is and she makes knives, like the standards and stuff could be different. And so it's it's a reputation system is kind of what you're looking at. And maybe you could even kind of frame what you're trying to do around using an example like that is like essentially what we're, it's, it would be like a reputation marketplace like Yelp obviously wouldn't be as unleashed as Yelp can be because we know that has problems already. Um, but it would be a little bit more controlled, but you would kind of, you're basically kind of laying out your business plan for the next three months is essentially what you need to do. Okay. Oh yeah. So would I be, oh, uh -huh. go ahead. Sorry. So would I be like for actual technical support, would I be looking for somebody like a Gimbal Labs or something like that? Because my developer, um, he's on GitHub and I, I don't personally understand all of the ins and outs of that. Um, but um, he's on GitHub all the time making submissions and everything like that. But for, for us, for a business model per se, I think that's where I'm misunderstood because the business model is not for my myself to be enriched by the marketplace. I want the yeah. marketplace funds to be put into building sailing vessels that are transporting cargo in an environmentally yeah. friendly way and maintaining them. I don't want funds personally i want to eliminate the the business model from you know yeah. the potential of being spoiled with human greed or whatever if everything goes crazy with crypto then the funds there i don't want them to be misappropriated i want to accomplish a specific objective yeah. and that is environmentally you know tasked to try to support things that need to be built and things that need to yep. be done. Maybe, so, maybe one of the things we can do, Brock, is because um, we have some people with questions. Uh, I don't know if mm -hmm. it's regarding what you're what you're talking about or not. <laughs> have you set up some time um, to talk to any of us yet? Uh, to I kind of set work up through? a time with uh, Tony Rose for okay. tomorrow. So I'll oh, be okay. doing that. But, yeah. yeah, so he'll he'll be able to help you a little bit better kind of flush out what you're talking about, because I, I know what you're talking about. It's what you want to do in the actual proposal itself, though, is you want to you just want to make sure what you're what you're trying to do is clear. I think everybody here would agree, like you need to make sure that it's clear as to what you're trying to do, because if not, people aren't going to trust you. Like that's just mm -hmm. that's just what it boils down to. But um, let's let's see if any of these questions are regarding what you're talking about. Anne, you had a question. Hi. Good morning. Good evening. Wherever you are, um, my question is not quite related to what Brock is asking, so I don't know. But uh, I'm not particularly a tech person. Um, however, we I'm out here in Africa. I'm in. East Africa, it's called Kenya, and um, I'm I'm just fascinated by what um, is going on here in re with regard to identity, and I'm I got curious about maybe whether I should put out a proposal. I am traditionally in education, and um, we have um, communities of people, um, Kenya, known as the Maasai, who kind of move um, with their cattle 
uh, across uh, to Tanzania sort of because they consider everywhere where there is grazing land, just land to move back and forth. And so what tends to happen is that they um, have, have had to be vetted in order to be given IDs um, because it's not clear whether they're Tanzanians or Kenyans. Regardless of the fact that they were born in Kenya, there's a record of their birth, there's a record of their schooling, but now they're being told to move um, to another sort of district, which they're totally unrelated to them, to, um, to get identities. And so you find that um, when a, uh, an identity is, is, is a transactional uh, registry, uh, then a person who reaches the age of 18, um, they cannot get an ID. It's like a social security number for those of you in America, places you know, it's like that. We call it ID here in Kenya. And they can't get an ID just because it's they have to be vetted for whether they are Kenyans or not. And so I, I was um, fascinated by the presentation that was done there about uh, human rights and identity. And I'm thinking more about that and wondering whether I can put out a proposal and I'm not sure of how, um, of how these, um, maybe, maybe, maybe it would be just a little uh, research into exactly what that particular sit situation is like and how um, decentralized identity systems could help a um, and be escalated to or be scaled up because uh, you find we have all these identities. You have a birth record and then you have a school record and you may have a person who does not have a birth certificate, um, yet they have somehow been able to be enrolled in a school. But then if they don't have a birth certificate, they cannot get a passport. So that proof of citizenship and identity becomes um a way people get excluded from being be having being able to transact, and um, you can't even get a SIM card. If you know what a SIM card is, it's like a phone card, and therefore you cannot transact because when you have a phone number and a phone card, then you can pay or you can have a bank account. So if you don't have an ID you can't have a bank account. And we have so many people who are getting excluded from the whole system because they can't get an identity. So the question is how would decentralized identity solve a problem like that for people who are being denied rights? Um, somebody's been, somebody was telling me his mom has waited 20 years to get an ID and she just can't, she's in her fifties. And uh, she got, she finally got her ID. No, she finally got her ID with his brother and his brother waited five years and she waited 20 years. Can you imagine how much she lost in terms of just being yeah. able to transact yeah. and just having so, that, right? So that's so my question. I, I kind of want to, I want to, if I, if I can chime into this, um, <clears throat> I think the next thing for a lot of people in terms of the identity uh, situation from all over the world, but even for Cardano itself is the localizing your outreach um, you're going to need to have a conversation with your local government, uh, especially when like even uh, even in the states here, uh, databases are very, very, very archaic and take a long time. Um, e even across the financial sector, it's still old. I mean, people are on nine, Windows uh, 95s because they have a full lockdown on it. Yeah, it's kind of nice. still great. Yeah, but I, but for your situation. Um, I, I would suggest, honestly, like, uh, like, even if you want to create a proposal to talk to lo your local government, um, as much yeah. as like, you know, uh, people, it, it really depends on how you write it. Um, I'm part of the DAP and integration team, maybe I can help you out. But um, mm. uh, even talking to your local, uh, your local government about helping create a database via like, uh, like NFT verification, like Italic Prism obviously is coming, but um, mm. that doesn't mean that a database can't be sped up uh, to create mm. these uh, identity onboardings for your local government. Like that, uh, if that helps, maybe that's an option to kind of weigh in to think about. Um, 
because uh, I don't know how your uh, your local government runs, but every single person here yeah. can talk online um, and communicate with like-minded people. But the ground is the the true ground to be taken is in the is in the local front, and I feel like uh, that's a big revolution that we as a human community all around the world with our all our pockets uh, uh, need to do better at. Um, uh, like community gardens are great. Um, and, uh, going to the local mall is great, but you know, it's like community outreach on the local front is, is needed, especially for the, the blockchain revolution, uh, and particularly identity in all, all forms of government and people, uh, need to be outreached local. So, um, so would this maybe put a proposal in either nation building DAPs or um, lobbying legislation? Yeah, okay. lobbying might be a good yeah. place to go. Um, Which one? Because lobbying might be good. I mean, I think you okay. have a place in the self-sovereign identity as well. Because um, mm -hmm. okay. we, we do have people who are working on projects that are outside of the government that have to do with legal things. Um, and a lot of those places are in Africa um, because mm -hmm. there's one of the one of the issues, right, is that there's a lot of places in the world, not just in Africa, that the government isn't doing their part <laughs> or their citizens will say. And sometimes it's it takes a grassroots movement to get something going for the government to notice. And the nice part is, is that we do have somebody who's actually doing this right now. Um, they've created 20,000 um, land titles for people in Zambia, I believe it is. And that's a completely ground up movement. Now the government is starting to take notice. And the nice part is, is uh, the, one of the reasons they're taking notice is, is they see a way that they can make money because they can tax it. And now they want to come to the table and they want to start to talk. And so, uh, and I'm not saying that what Alexander is saying is not correct, but there's two different approaches to it. So I wouldn't want to necessarily dissuade you from going through the um, self-sovereign identity either, but advocacy would be a good one too. Because I know we have, and with Atala Prism and um, IOG is actually a part of the California Blockchain um, Advocacy Coalition. Um, and we are advocating um, quite regularly uh, with people in California, we have a team who is working on it. So it is something that we do as well. And the other thing is, okay. uh, I would uh, I would have you maybe talk to, and I'm going to throw Anushka under the bus this time, <laughs> um, because I know Anushka uh, is very heavily involved in things that are going on in Africa. So I think she might be a good person to talk to, and maybe even Tony, <laughs> who I just saw pop okay. up. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, and Sorry, and, oh yeah, who do we have next? Curtis, I think you had your hand up. All right, I just wanted to respond to Brock. Um, I okay. as well have a very similar outlook of, of my business proposals and where I plan to take, you know, my skill set. And it's not so much to profit myself, it's to grow the ecosystem uh, in a very similar manner. And so I struggled with how can I sell this product when the traditional markets and the traditional investors are looking for profit, right? When that's not necessarily what I'm after. So I transitioned my outlook to be more like what if I did get this profit and it went into a DAO type structure or into the project itself, what could those funds do and how could they be utilized to bring those efforts and those goals into perpetuity? Like how can I take those funds and use them, right? Not for personal gain, but for the benefit of your, your project. So just trying that transition of instead of this isn't for me and the investors aren't investing necessarily for profit it's the benefit of the ecosystem itself yeah that was all cool maybe you guys can um connect or something if you guys are on discord or something maybe you guys can connect and share some ideas as to how to structure all that stuff 
Cool. Um, next person, I am going to probably mess up your name, so I'm going to apologize now. Is it uh, Tegani? It's Tegay. Oh, Tegay. It's okay. Tegay. Um, uh, My apologies. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> Um, I, I would really actually like to go back to Anne's question. Uh, I think the the, uh, the problem with the governments is that it's the same government that really, um, yeah, they could give her a paper identity. There is no problem. They But they kept her for 50 years without giving her. So really going back to the government is, um, especially in Africa, is, is not going to be... A, viable solution and probably um if uh Rishka, maybe i don't know how much you you are involved in took that project that um i've had uh, a discussion with uh, identity com uh, or the national identity commission uh, head on twitter uh, about why they are not using Atala prison for the Ethiopian national identity. They have chosen uh, an identity solution from uh, India called MOSIP, which is, at least in my way, I'm not a technical person, from what I saw, it's a quite inferior so solution. Atala prison has been in Ethiopia for over four years. And uh, they have signed uh, a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Education uh, to deliver for 5 million. I think the, you have signed also for 20 million students more. So really, um, yeah, depending on the government to provide self-sovereign identity is not going to be the best solution. The best solution is the grassroots movement, the grass or, the, or tools for the grassroots movement. I, 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 was, I wanted to ask Lance about that, how um, the onboarding and the authentication, especially the, the community authentic authentication part and the recovery part, how easy can you make it so that people can take on themselves, communities can take on them, because there are a lot of community organizations, small or big, few, I mean, from 10 people to 20 people to, uh, we have in Ethiopia, for example, uh, uh, an Orthodox church, over 50 million members have been, I have actually wrote to IOG, if they want to have Atala Prism implemented in Ethiopia, they should target the church because the church have a very big problem um, keeping it, it, its members uh, and I mean, uh, following up with its members all over the world, not only in Ethiopia, but all over the world, over 50 million members. So I think more than governments, uh, it's the grassroots or the community organizations, the churches, the mosques, those are the ones who has to be targeted. And um, I was very happy to see the, uh, this uh, um, identity acceleration in Atala prison because I know IOG is also has to do business. It has to uh, deal with the government. It has to follow the rules. And I know all those things, but providing those people here in, uh, in Catalyst, the organizers uh, to have those tools is I think the best solution. I think what Anne asked is, is not going to be solved by the government. I don't think it will be solved for the next 20 years or 30 years if we leave the, the, the question to the government. Uh, that's what yeah. I want to say. Yeah. And I think that's the approach that um, one of our, the guy who's doing the titles in Zambia, I think he's Zambia. using the, um, the approach of it's, it's better to ask uh, forgiveness than permission. That old adage. <laughs> So sometimes it's the best way. I'll tell you, if if you target the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, uh, the Ethiopian government would have, have they would have no choice but to adapt Atala Prism as a national identity. Now they have spent a lot of money. Of course, there are a lot of, uh, what I call this, 
uh, organizations um, uh, such as World Bank and uh, Melinda and um, there are those organizations, really they are they are the, the, the yeah the network of these corrupt organizations that are pushing that solution while there is a better solution uh, in Atala Prism that they have already implemented the government they, 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 their 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 offices is about 500 meters apart the national uh, identity program and the uh, uh, Ministry of Education is about 500 meters apart. I, I, I can't understand why they would choose uh, this MOSIP over uh, Atala Prism. I have asked him point blank and I, I asked him if they have done a, a analysis or a comparative analysis between these two identity systems. And he said they have done. And I didn't want to continue with that discussion because I uh, couldn't really, I didn't, I don't know if they have done really uh, this, but I doubt it very much if they have done, but there is also corruption and everything, but the only way to, to beat corruption is to go to the grassroots mm -hmm. and deliver yeah. those tools. Agreed. Yeah, our group cool. uh, definitely feels that very much. And so it's so valuable that you are here right now so that you can give us that kind of feedback um, we, the, the feedback of the users is what's going to make this identity wallet work well, right? It's going to be making it easy and also translations, uh, for it, uh, are going to be so important. Um, so I think, um, please stay connected. And, uh, this is challenging me to also, uh, to remind myself that I need to, uh, communicate probably weekly uh, in in an, like video form and blog form, just so that you groups like you grassroots efforts can track this work. Uh, they can make comments uh, about uh, our interface and and translations and things like that. We want it to be so easy to use, and we uh, um, Daryl O'Donnell, who's a trust over IP and and a Tal Prism. Um, uh, advisor, uh, he's one of our mentors, and he talks about wallet recovery being the most important uh, and most difficult aspect of a wallet. Uh, and we have that um, listed as one of our features for Fund 8 um, to really focus on that. Uh, so essentially, the end of Fund 7, um, you know, is a chance for you, you to give us feedback and maybe to help us with translations. Uh, and then Fund 8, uh, hopefully we provide those kind of features uh, in the user interface and in, in recovery, uh, the wallet recovery uh, aspects so that grassroots efforts truly can get started with it uh, and they don't have to rely on some central authority uh, to provide it for them. Yeah. Cool. All right, so next uh, we have, is it Quadi? Yes. I probably messed that up too. <laughs> <laughs> no, surprisingly, you said it right. Most people say Quidi, but it's Quadi. Quadi, okay. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. How y'all doing? My name is Quadi Ba. Um, and I'm here to talk about um, Project Shield. And I, before I start anything, I just wanted to say um, everything that my brother um, taught. Taj, Tajin, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing your name wrong, <laughs> but everything that you are saying is absolutely right. Um, one of the main things wrong with Africa is complete and total corruptions. And it's it's messed up that the West and a lot of projects and a lot of nonprofit organizations, a lot of companies that go into Africa continue to go down the same route over and over and over again and, uh, and pull money and energy and effort into the same situations and the people don't get help. The only people that continue to, to benefit from it is politicians and corrupt officials and their families. You know, So he is absolutely right. The, grass, the grassroots effort is the best way of going. You know, um, if you want to talk to African people, you do not talk to the politicians. You go to the local villages and talk to the village chiefs. You talk to the elders in the community. You know, um, you talk to the, um, the, the the religious leaders, whether it's um, whether it's the churches, the mosque, or, 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 or the tribal leaders and, and the tribal um, elders. You talk to those people and you get those people on board. Once you do that, the government themselves have no other option or form but to join on board. He is absolutely one hundred percent right about that. But um, but it, it seems like 
everyone that goes into Africa from Europe or from the West, we continue to go down the same route of feeding the, feeding these corrupt leaders money and everything and, and wonder why Africa continues to be messed up and cannot develop. Well, you, you don't have no one to blame but yourself if you lose your money to these corrupt officials. You know, um, that's just my intake on that. And I absolutely agree with him on that. Um, Besides that, just the project I'm working on, we are doing just about the same thing. So um, my, uh, the, my company is called um, Quiddy File Solution, and um, I've been working with um, the African Union Shield Foundation, which is nonprofit, uh, a nonprofit organization based in West Africa, Liberia. Um, and our goal is to give Africans um, a free decentralized database that they can use and the government can choose to use if they, uh, if they want to. And what we want to do is um, it, it's around five to six different sectors. The first is social awareness. There's a lot of stuff socially that the African people need to be about. The next is um, healthcare, identity, education, legal documents, and the last is data research. So we feel our DAP with all of these in play, the African people can be able to move easier, um, easier. So um, with the foundation, the, um, the African Union Shield Foundation is slowly going through all these communities and getting people to sign on board. And the next thing that we are doing, we are currently in touch with the um, with the um, Liberia University, the Liberian University in order to um, in order to fully um, work with them and to build basically a lab within the university that, that can go ahead and push um, Project Catalyst and teach the, um, and teach the university students um, how to go ahead and build on this project. So um, I just I just came in just to basically um, add on to that. That's the route that we're going. And if you if you have uh, if you have identity, if you are working with identity, if you are working with um, education or, or healthcare, we'll love to work with you. We'll love to collaborate with you i have i have put our um website within the within the chat you can look us up um and yeah just i i thank you all for, for giving me the time and opportunity and i look forward to talking and working with anyone and mr lens thank you thank you brother what you're doing is amazingly awesome i'm i'm following you every step of the way sir thank you very much cool fantastic Pete, I think we have another meeting at 10 o'clock South African Standard Time. Do. Um, yeah. So we have two minutes left of the uh, amazing meeting. Thanks for the energy. Thanks for the amazing minds. Thanks for the amazing solutions. And thanks for the reality on the ground. I mean, that it's, it's really refreshing to know that, you know, we speak with a common voice and we realize that grassroots movements can start shaking things up and making a big difference in, in our world. And I think a lot of us are here because we know that tomorrow can be so much better than it is today, right? And we know that we can help fellow citizens to be citizens of the world. Um, and hopefully we don't have to see so much of poverty and pain and suffering. So thank you so much for being here today. Tony, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Do you want to say something before we leave? It's so awesome to see everyone here. Nice work. I love the energy. I think, uh, you know, the Catalyst community is just incredible. We love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, guys. Thanks for joining us and continue to be awesome. See you next week. Same time, same cool. place. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.